Hey guys, and welcome back to Surface Studio, where we will talk about all things related to filmmaking and visual effects. Now this, you know what this is. This is a Pokeball. I have already shown you in previous tutorials on this channel how you can track the motion of a moving object in your video to attach visual elements or effects to it. Now the one thing I have not yet shown you is, focus right here, is how you can make the camera follow the motion of that moving object. You can use this technique to create cool looking sniper effects, follow cars around, or just have the viewer focus in on a moving object in your video. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do that. Now in this tutorial, we will be using HitFilm Express, which is a free tool for video editing and visual effects, but I have already released a version of this tutorial using Adobe After Effects. If you want to check that out, I'm going to drop you a link to that down below. Now this is going to be an intermediate tutorial and I will assume that you have at least watched my absolute beginner tutorial as well as the tutorial for how to do motion tracking in HitFilm Express. If you haven't yet, I'm going to drop you links to those tutorials down below. Be sure to check them out first before you come back here. Also, if you do enjoy my tutorials, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. It makes a huge difference to my channel and I really, really appreciate it. But now, before I talk your face off, let's jump right into the tutorial. Welcome to the exciting world of HitFilm Express. I have a new project here and I've already imported the two clips that we will be using for this tutorial. One called lakekawaguchiko.mov and one called crosshair.mp4. And as always, if you do want to follow along with this tutorial, you will be able to download these clips from our website. So simply go to surfacedstudio.com forward slash downloads and you will be able to grab these clips and follow along. Now, the main clip we will be using to create this effect is Lake Kawaguchiko.mov, which is a drone shot I took in Japan at Lake Kawaguchiko, which is actually at the foot of Mount Fuji. And if it hadn't been cloudy, like it just seems to be most of the year, you would actually be able to see Mount Fuji right up there. But this shot is quite interesting because it has a little bit of movement from the drone strafing left. And there's a couple of moving objects in here that we can track nicely, like these cars down here on the road. So let's get set up and let's convert this footage into a composite shot. In the media panel, let's right click onto lakekawaguchiko.mov and select to make composite shot. I'm going to call this one car track. Now HitFilm has detected that this is a clip shot in 4K, but I don't actually want to use 4K for the final effect because we are going to be zooming in on this footage. I just shot it at a higher resolution so that when we zoom in, it doesn't just go all pixelated. So for my composite shot itself, I actually want to set that to 1920 by 1080, which is full HD. And don't worry if the file you downloaded from my website is already in 1920 by 1080. I might just upload a smaller version of this file just so that it's a bit quicker for you guys to download you'll still be able to follow along with this tutorial exactly the same way. Frame rate, I'm going to leave on 23.976, which exactly matches the clip that we're going to be using. Let's hit OK. We're now inside the composite shot. And let me just make the viewer a little bit bigger so we've got a bit more space to work with. If you zoom out and select this layer, you'll be able to see that this layer is actually a little bit too big. And we now kind of have to scale it down to make it fit into this composite shot. The easiest way to do that is simply to right click onto this layer in your layers window, come into transform and select fit to frame. And let's just zoom right back in. So here's now our clip within this composite shot. And the effect we're going to create is that at about a second and a half in, the camera is going to zoom in on this car right here. And then for the next few seconds, it's going to follow its movement as if the camera is kind of tracking this car. Then towards the end, just as the car vanishes behind those trees again, the camera is going to zoom right back out. Let me just reset the viewer so we can see the whole landscape. And that's where the effect will end. So let's come to about a second and a half in, which is one second and 12 frames because we're at 23.976 frames per second. Let's zoom in on this car and we now need to actually start tracking its movement. Now, I already have a separate tutorial that covers how to do motion tracking in HitFilm Express. So I'm going to go a little bit faster here, assuming that you've watched that. If you haven't yet, I'm going to drop you a link to that down in the video description. Now, let's come up into window and let's bring up the track panel. It doesn't need to be quite that big. So let's just scooch this over a little bit to the right hand side. With the layer selected, let's expand it. And under tracks, let's hit this little green plus to add a track. Let's zoom in a little bit. Let's grab this track point and position it on this car. Let's keep zooming in just a little bit. And I'm going to make the tracking area a bit smaller and kind of place it right at the corner edge of this window for the car right about there. The search area also doesn't need to be quite as big and I want it a bit wider because the car is mainly moving towards the left. 
Let's expand the track panel just a little bit. Now I'm going to change my method from optical flow over to template match. I found that that just worked a whole lot better for this particular shot. I'm also going to pop open the options for this template match. Error tolerance I'm going to drop to 20% because I do want a fairly accurate track. Iterations I'm going to leave on 15. But the channels I'm going to change from luminance over to RGB. Just because I found that otherwise the tracker gets thrown off by these trees that come in front of the car. So let's hit OK. Zoom out a little bit. And I think I'm actually going to make this track area a little bit bigger, a little bit wider to include a little bit more of the car so that hopefully we can track right through those trees. Let's zoom out a little bit more. And let's just simply try tracking this forward. Now, got stuck on the tree. So let's, yep, that actually looks all right. Let's keep tracking this forward. Yep, I think that works. Let's keep tracking. That actually looks all right. What I might do is under the options, I might actually increase the error tolerance to 25% again, because so far it actually seems to be tracking through those trees all right. I don't just want it to stop all the time. Let's hit track forward. Yep, that still looks all right. And yep, just keep on tracking. Now, right there, we are definitely losing it. So let's just come back a little bit. And we may have to manually adjust the track point to track through this bush here. So I'm just going to kind of move this track point into position for every frame until the car is through the bush. Maybe right about there should be sufficient. And let's just keep tracking forward. And I'm just going to fix the last few frames up manually. And I think that's probably far enough. Let's just check out what this looks like. And I'd say that is actually a fairly decent track. Next, we need somewhere to store this tracking data. And for that, in our layer window, let's select new layer. And I'm going to create a new point layer. Let's just quickly rename this to tracker. And if you're wondering why your screen just went black, it's because right now up here, I'm just viewing the layer, which on a tracker is absolutely nothing. So let's come back to the viewer, which will show you the entire clip. Let's reselect Lake Kawaguchiko.mov and reselect our tracker. Over on the right hand side in the track panel, I'm now going to select my target layer to be this tracker point object, X and Y position, and hit apply. Now, if you select the tracker, you should have a point object that follows the movement of this car from about a second and a half in. So we're about halfway there. Let's zoom all the way back out. Let's collapse all of our layers. And now we have something tracking the movement of this car, but the camera doesn't yet follow it. Fortunately, that is actually super easy. Let's create a new layer. And this time I'm going to create a camera. I'm going to rename this layer to, well, camera. And now I'm actually going to come back to the beginning of my composite shot. And then I want to parent this camera layer to the tracker point. So now if I scrub forward, the car comes in. And well, I can kind of see the camera moving. You can see this 3D grid moving here, but the camera doesn't seem to actually follow the movement of the car. And that is because the camera will only affect lights and 3D layers. And our Lake Kawaguchiko.mov layer is just a 2D layer. So let's click on this little checkerboard icon here and convert this layer to a 3D plane. And now if you scrub forward, now you can see this layer is actually starting to move and it moves exactly to compensate for the movement of the car. So now if I zoom in just a little bit, you should be able to see that first the car comes in, but from this point forward, the camera moves to keep the car exactly at the same position in the frame. So the camera is now tracking its movement. At the end, the camera kind of unlocks again and the car continues on because at this point, we have no more information in our tracker and therefore the camera stops following it. So now let's zoom back out and let's have the camera kind of actually zoom in onto that car just as it starts to follow it. For that, let's zoom in just a little bit on our timeline and come to the very first keyframe on our tracker point object, which is where the camera will start following that car. Now I'm actually going to reset my view to scale to fit. And you can't see it at the bottom. There's an option to scale to fit. Unfortunately, it's off the screen for me. Now with the timeline indicator on the first keyframe for this tracker point object, let's expand the camera layer, expand the transform, and I'm going to set a keyframe on the position property. Let's come forward to maybe about two seconds in, so 12 frames forward, and let's use the camera controls on the right hand side in your viewer. I'm going to select the top one, the dolly, click, 
and drag up to zoom in on our footage. And you can zoom in as far as you want to. Let go, let's select the pan tool and again click and drag. And now I'm going to drag this to kind of move the car into the center of the screen. If I come up in my layers, I have now created two keyframes for the camera. My starting position and then the camera is kind of zooming in on that car. And from this point forward, well, the camera is now parented to this tracker object, so it's going to follow it all the way through up until it goes into the trees. And let's come down a little bit again. And at this last keyframe here, for the last keyframe of this tracker is where the camera stops following this car. I want to zoom back out. So on the camera layer, let's reselect the position property and click this little circle with a dot, which creates a new keyframe at this position. Let's come forward about 12 frames and let's grab the camera controls again, zoom right back out. And I want to zoom out so that I can see the entire scene. Now, obviously the layer itself has shifted because the position of the camera has shifted. So I'm now going to use the tracking tool and kind of reposition this layer as best as I can. Maybe zoom out just a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to center this layer as best as I can. And then I'm just going to dolly out a little bit more just to kind of get the most out of this really nice wide shot. So that looks pretty good. In our layers, we now have two keyframes for the camera. So the camera is now kind of zooming right back out towards the end. And then the car disappears behind the trees. Let's zoom out in my layer window a little bit again. And if you're wondering how I'm doing this, I'm just holding down Control or Command. If you're on a Mac, I'm just scrolling down on my mouse wheel. So these are the zoom in keyframes for the camera and zooming out. So with those two keyframes selected, let's just right click either one of them, select Temporal Interpolation and select Smooth. I'm also going to select the first few, right click Temporal Interpolation and Smooth, just so that the animation of the camera looks a little bit nicer. And you can see that there is no motion blur right now. Let me just fit this to frame again. There's no motion blur on this zoom and it just looks a little bit, a little bit jarring. So what I'm going to do, let's collapse the camera and the tracker on this Lake Kawaguchi Co layer. Let's enable motion blur. So as the camera shoots in and out, you get this really nice, cool looking zoom effect. And let's zoom all the way back out, rewind. And let's simply play this back and see what we've got. Cool, and I'd say that's looking pretty good. And technically that's kind of all there is to this technique. You can now add effects or sniper scopes or other graphics over it. For example, what we can do, let's come back to the media panel. I've also added this little crosshair.mp4 into my project, which is just like the little animation here of like a animated crosshair effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab this layer, drag and drop it into my composite shot right at the very top. Let's come over into the controls panel, expand the layer properties. Let's change the blend mode from normal over to additive. And let's come to the point where the camera kind of zooms in on that car right about here. Let's just slide this layer over so that the animation of this crosshair coming in happens right about, right about there. So just as we're zooming in on that car, that crosshair comes up and we're then tracking it. I'm actually also just going to move this layer a little bit so it sits right on top of that car. And just towards the end here, maybe let's just fade it out. So let's expand the layer, expand the transform and the opacity, set a keyframe at 100%. Let's just go forward to about there. And let's set the opacity of that tracking crosshair to zero. So we're kind of just zooming right back out, maybe just a little bit faster. And yeah, that really is all you need to do. But of course, you can just add whatever you want and customize this effect in any way you want. Let's just zoom back out, rewind and play back our final camera tracking effect. And that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to watch more, just click these links over on the right hand side. If you want to support me what I do on this channel, be sure to check out all of the links down in the video description. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I will see you later.